In typical AWC fashion, we have ruthlessly eliminated two of the competition at the top of the day. Love to see it. Excellent games coming in. Enlight with a phenomenal victory, and we will see Zuniaki's men once again at the end of today. But now, our order of business is the upper bracket, the teams that have been undefeated in Cup 4 of the summer season here. I'm Healingstad, and I'm your host. We have Venruki, Supertease, and Zico joining me on the desk for this one. Absolutely incredible. This was two teams that really struggled in the last cup and quite frankly haven't had the best start to the summer season changed my mind they've been very up and down they had a good cup one performance but have fallen off a little bit in cups two and three now they're back against wildcard gaming who really is a team we should talk about because these guys were potentially the best team in spring we talked about them as a very much a favorite going into the spring finals not that long ago yeah they were really consistent i mean when they brought on morrow it just seemed like the possibilities were endless for this roster running the windwalker mage to supplement some of their compositions as well as having him play balance through this had lots of different comps that ended up working well and this is actually really interesting to see 36 percent of chat going to be going with wildcard gaming and 64 percent with change my mind clearly a cloud or a crowd favorite here in this match for wildcard gaming my big question is are we going to see looney on the restoration druid is he going to switch it up i feel like more than likely minpoike will be playing that restoration druid so I'm just kind of curious, is Looney going to be going with the Mistweaver Monk? Doesn't look like it. And they are going to be bringing in the Warrior yep. Mage Druid. This is really interesting. I, I feel like this matchup is still in favor of the Rogue Mage, but we'll see what Wildcard Gaming can get done. Yeah, it's very interesting to see the poll. I think that really does speak to the fact that Wildcard Gaming have not been performing, but they're back. Morrow's on his Mage, Looney's on his Restoration Druid, but Minpoike and Fried Kitty have been doing such a good job holding down that Restoration Druid Frost Mage all year long. Wildcard Gaming, they'll really need to find something here. Blizzo on his main arms warrior coming in hot in that Grand Arena. A matchup we haven't seen in a very long time. <laughs> I feel like Missa Pandaria might have yep. been the last time that we really saw Warrior Mage Druid head to head with Rogue Mage Druid. These two teams focusing heavily on Restoration Druid, so it's not surprising to see them start the blind pick with their best foot forward. Looney already trinketing out of blind. That's a crowd control that Wildcard Gaming don't have on their side to get Minpoike's Spider's Medallion. Instead, they'll have to use Intimidating Shout, maybe Stormbolt Polymorphs. Is, is that something we should look to anticipate? Or is Stormbolt going to be used onto the kill target, the Mage? It's really, it really depends on what their play style is. Is Wildcard Gaming going to focus on just avoiding crowd control and disrupting the fight? Or are they going to try and look for crowd control of their own and make big coordinated pushes? So far, one counter spell, Minpoike could net them an Ice Block. Big damage onto Fried Kitty. Blizzo leaping in. They actually switched targets to Looney, catching him off the back of the interrupt there, trying to really pressure him down as well. Barkskin is now faded. Change my mind, go for an all-in. This seems like the standard play for Rogue Mage. Go after the healer. Have your Frost Mage control. Looney, can he hold on? He's used the Barkskin Trinket Iron Bark. It's just not enough. He falls so early on in the game. A huge offensive push from Change My Mind closes it out almost instantaneously. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I've been playing a lot of Restoration Druid since the patch, and actually one of the hardest things to heal through is when people attack you now, you know? It's so difficult to keep yourself alive. Kleptomania on the safeguard. Obviously, fantastic execution from Change My Mind, but this is Looney, you know? You consistently yourself, Seiko, say he's potentially the best Druid in the world. I would tend to agree with you, but he just gets slaughtered like a piece of paper or something in that game. Yeah, I mean, not really that surprising, but it's interesting to see now as well how these druids deal with the nerfs. Uh, are we going to see more Guardian affinity and a little bit less, you know, uh, Feral affinity, people opting for a little bit more survival? Uh, what, uh, you know, essences are going to be uh, are people going to be running with? And, of course, it feels like you just... It's, it's such an obvious thing as well from, for Rogue Mage to blind up the Druid, get his trinket, and then, you know, just set up a swap. Usually, you just end up getting, like, you know, a, a Bark skin, maybe an Iron Bark as well. Uh, usually, Blizzo is there to back up the Rogue. But this time around, Hacker actually uh, gets on top of Looney a little bit earlier, and they get a nice cross CC here with Blizzo as well. They have, you know, a lot of pressure uh, because Acro actually had time to apply his bleeds prior to the swap and then of course Mipoike as well assisting with the bash hacker committing the vanish you know this is the vendetta this is the icy veins this is literally everything smoke bomb maledicts everything is flying in here and Looney he almost survived here but then Mipoike comes in with a little moonfire <laughs> <Moonfire. laughs> just takes him out 
Yeah, the Druid versus Druid. Mimpoike getting the better of Looney in this one. And I was just taking a look at Looney's build because I think it's it's fair to note. And he's playing a really greedy build. He's playing both of the mana regeneration essences again, rather than the conflict and strife, which we've seen some Druids opting for for that extra versatility. He's also running a very low versatility build, the Haste Mastery, which is fantastic healing when you're healing your partners, but you do lose that damage reduction. And then I think the, the top thing is, as you say, no Guardian Affinity. Uh, both these Druids running Moonkin Affinity. But this is a big problem for wildcard game. You know, if they can't win the rogue mage or just the mage druid matchups in general, the cleaves are going to struggle. What is their answer for Change My Mind? Because Change My Mind keep beating them here, Elliot. That's a good question. <laughs> and that's I mean, what I'm throwing at you. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I mean <laughs> I don't it, in the past, we have seen them run the Windwalker Death Knight with the Mistweaver Monk, and that might be an option. I mean, maybe with some of the reduction in healing to the Restoration Druids and, you know, mana going down a little bit, maybe the consistent pressure of that Windwalker Death Knight really can start adding up over time, and maybe they actually can pull victory against the Rogue Mage Druid. I think it's an option for them. The Warrior Mage Druid is interesting because it's a matchup you definitely can win, but I think when both teams are kind of on an even footing, I still you have to favor the Rogue in that matchup. It just has so much more lockdown with the consistent kidney shot. They can go after their target. Of course, every time there's Vendetta available, it's just such a nightmare for a team to deal with. Yeah, and, and I want to kind of look bigger picture at the 8.2 meta because you you were saying this at the very start of the cast, Sid, that this was the first time we've really seen this matchup since Mr. Pandaria. And 8.2 really does seem to have opened things up, especially with these restoration nerfs. We've seen a lot of the kind of ranged... We've seen a lot of the healers changing up and represented here in Europe especially, but also a lot of the melee as well. Arms Warriors are back, uh, Retribution Paladins with the Unbound Freedom. It's been really nice to see. I mean, even just Feral Druid Survival Hunter yeah, are a true. combination we haven't seen in quite a while. I'm wondering what strategy we see here from Wildcard Gaming, that composition in particular. We didn't really get to see it fully fleshed out. That was kind of uh, just a good strategy by Change My Mind. Use Blind, see if Looney would kind of do this the scripted play where the healer just trinkets it because it's the same cooldown as Blind. So usually you can just remove the best crowd control with your trinket. But they anticipated Looney to do that. They held on to Vendetta, they held on to Icy Veins, and then they switched to him. So Looney can't just trade his uh, trinket that way. He needs to pay attention to the cooldowns a bit more in the situation overall. If he does, then he can get through that situation much more easily. Uh, so maybe we see the same composition. They could also maybe try a spell cleave on Ashermane's Fall, but the only one that they've really got, I think, is the Mage Elemental. And with the nerfs to Pack Spirit, I don't know if I really want to be mm, an Elemental Z Shaman yeah. into a Rogue <laughs> Mage right now. So I don't know. They're in a tough spot. I, I would have liked to have seen a, a small map and the Windwalker Death Knight again. Maybe even a Windwalker Death Knight Paladin and run it Minpoike the whole game. Cleave down and the Rogue is an off target and switch between the two. It seems to me that the Windwalker Death Knight would be what they've practice the most. Obviously, this is their mains. Maro, Frost Mage, Blizzard Warrior, Looney Resto Druid, but this is a composition that hasn't got any field testing in so long, the Warrior right. Mage Druid. So, I guess here in the upper bracket, you have a second chance if you go down to the lower, and if this does work for you, it's a comp you can run into three teams, because Diabolus are likely going to be playing Rogue Mage into you, Method Black are likely playing Rogue Mage into you, so maybe Wildcard Gaming are just trying to get reps in, figure out what their comp is, because those three teams are tied with them, I believe, on points, or, well, not Method Black, but Change My Mind and Diabolus are tied on points, so if they can find a comp that beats it, then they're going to be good, but the time before they find it is going to look not so great for them, and I think this is that time. Yeah, and I think it is important to note that that first game, it wasn't a fluke, it was well executed by Change My Mind, but it was something that Looney can definitely adapt some of his build to play a little bit better into, and we'll get a better representation of this Mage Warrior. Honestly, Change My Mind have been super impressive, you know, they were the team that knocked down N-Light. They did win the series 3-1, to one, but with their Rogue Mage Druid, that was their three wins. They played 3-0 with this matchup, which we saw as one last weekend that Metha Black even and we're struggling with, even after these Restoration Druid nerfs, Change My Mind have looked really good on this Mage Druid, and they're one up against Wildcard Gaming, looking like they could easily make it through to Championship Sunday here, Ben. Yeah, I mean, so far, so good for them. We'll have to see what Wildcard Gaming can do in this series to bounce back. I think it's interesting, Blizzo, of course, on the Arms Warrior. In the past, Arms Warriors were really susceptible to Roots, the Nova, the Frost Nova, but now 
Surprisingly, they have a lot of tools to deal with it. The Avatar gets them out of roots. Of course, they have the Blade Storm as well as Blizzle's playing the Gnome. So he has a lot of abilities that he can get out of roots with, and he can maintain a little bit of uptime on Fried Kitty in this matchup, and that might be one of the most crucial things for their roster. They're probably just going to be going after Fried Kitty. That is their main objective. The problem is you have Acro going on tomorrow, and he's got Kidney Shot. And Kidney Shot is very effective at shutting down casters. Right now, the setup from Change My Mind could net in an ice block. Yeah, this is the blind stab. This is what Looney can't afford to use his Gutter's Medallion on unless Vendetta has been used. So instead, Morrow just has to kite like a MVP and really hold on to cooldowns for the team while Looney sits through that crowd control. And he did manage to stall. Change My Mind are going to switch targets anyway. They don't seem to care. Looney's going to trade Barks. Skin. It needs to be enough, but I don't think it's going to be. Glider Safeguard gets stripped off by the Kleptomania. Looney's totally exposed. Did he change to the Guardian Affinity? Now becomes the next question. Acro looks like he's given up the chase. He's going to be going back on tomorrow. Looney recovers through that attack. Decent swaps from Change My Mind. Really putting Looney to the test, but this time around... Oh, big Ooh. mistake there by Acro. Shadow Step Kidney Shot on Diminishing Return still. Looney's going to have an easy time recovering now. That's a disaster, and that really is a rookie mistake coming in from Acro. Uh, Looney's going to be able to easily walk away with that, and that would have been a nightmare situation. I mean, he had no Barkskin. That could have easily been the trinket, but unfortunately for Change My Mind, Looney's going to be able to stay alive and not really have to use anything in that situation, which otherwise could have been really scary. Looney now... Taking a little bit of damage. Fried Kitty trying to get control of the game, but Blizzard's just having so much uptime in this matchup. I'm curious to see. I think Blizzard's actually getting the most damage in the arena right now. You can see that with the details add on, and Blizzard's doing just a really good job with this uptime. But unfortunately, Fried Kitty's been kind of able to deal with it. We'll have to see. Do you think this is a matchup that could come down to mana? Mm, I mean, possibly. I'm wondering how the new essences, since they're nerfed, are going to respond deeper in dampening. Big push on the Fried Kitty and Poike there to back him up. Change My Mind is going to be maybe a little bit lackluster in terms of damage in between those big cooldown windows. As I say that, Looney's disrespecting this push, not making any trades. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Manages to at least escape around the corner. Looney is one of those healers that you can almost always count on correct cooldown management, but... Now that Druids have been nerfed, perhaps he needs to recalculate those situations and figure out exactly when and where he can get away with not using cooldowns. As he's currently stunned up by Acro, Fried Kitty blinks in the line of sight. They stun him, catching him out of form. Looney thought he could come to safety, but Acro commits his vanish to go for an all-out assault. Somehow Looney's still dealing with it. Minpoki looking to Cyclone. I was wondering if that was Looney at low health. Looney just under so much pressure, even on Ashermane's fall, the biggest map, even with Morrow and Blizzard supporting him, is certainly struggling. If he even makes one mistake, change my mind, you're going to bring this to match point. Yeah, bash on Acro allows Looney enough uptime to escape. Now Fried Kitty still under pressure. Morrow looking to get the pressure, rolling. Fried Kitty getting low. Temporal Shield bounces his health back up, but that was Temporal Shield as well as the Iron Bark. One thing I'm noticing change my mind doing consistently in the matchup is every time they get a kidney shot, they use the Gladiator's Maledict Trinket. A lot of players have opted not to use that trinket since it was changed. It does more of a damage over time effect and healing reduction over time. So basically, it used to work where it had a delayed cast, and then it would do a big chunk of damage as well as big healing reduction. Now, it instantaneously goes off, and over time does damage and reduces healing. And that's going to be really effective against the Restoration Druid. In a situation where he gets caught into a kidney shot, he can't dispel it, kind of negates all of those healing over time effects and allows Change My Mind to develop pressure. Mm -hmm. Good crowd control here by Wildcard Gaming. They've got Minpoike and a Polymorph right when they wanted to switch to Looney, so perhaps costing them an ice block for this push. They get the Gladiator Safeguard. Do they have a Kleptomania to remove it? Doesn't look like it. Iron Park and Safeguard going to be a huge defense here for Change My Mind to recover. Unlikely that Fried Kitty needs to use his ice block. And as you were saying earlier, this is looking to be like a matchup that could come down to mana if Looney keeps preempting these swaps. Both teams so durable. It seems quite difficult for the mages to be killed off as well. Looney, I would say, is the most vulnerable member of the six in this game. It's going to be a lot more difficult for Blizzard to stay on the Druid. His stun is a shorter duration, a little bit less consistent pressure than that of the Assassination Rogue. So the swap potential of Wildcard Gaming is much lower. Perhaps they should be targeting Acro at some point, especially when Looney is the main target. Usually if you're attacking the melee that's on your healer, that's oh. definitely the best. But Gladiator's Maledict has a lot of time to ramp up. Looney's going to dispel its healing absorption, try and line of sight around the corner, catch a big soul forest heal, goes for a Cyclone, but Minpoike actually restells it to dodge it. Fried Kitty blinks away, but Blizzard and Hopper 
pursuit. Gets polymorphed out of line of sight. Looney's not going to risk dispelling that. Temporal shield for Maro, anticipating a swap, which is currently engaged by Change My Mind, but then Maro gets cycloned on his temporal shield, so he's not going to get any benefit of that. And it just feels like Change My Mind have full control of this. The only thing that maybe Wildcard Gaming have in their favor is an Arms Warrior pressure. Other than that, uh, it's looking so one-sided for Change My Mind. Maro has to block incredibly low on health, 30 seconds into dampening. Yep, Morrow has one ice block left. Fried Kitty still has both of his available in the match, but there's always the potential at any time. Change my mind can just make a big one-shot attempt on Looney. Looney's been doing a really good job dealing with the pressure so far, but anything can happen with a rogue mage. Have to see. Acro now going after Morrow. Looks like they want to continue the mage race. Fried Kitty getting interrupted. This could be his first ice block, but he was pummeled on Frost. A bit of a scary situation. Minpoike deals with it quite nicely with the Iron Bark, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough. Safeguard comes in. Fraud Kitty does manage to hold on. Minpoike finally tops him off. He's going to be completely fine. We're at 8% dampening. What is the mana situation looking like right now? We have Minpoike around 38, 40% mana. Looney at around 50% mana. So there is a slight lead for Wildcard Gaming in that regard. And if they can hold on, maybe the consistent damage coming in from that Arms Warrior will be what puts them ahead. We'll have to wait and see. Warbreaker activated. Bluzo really wants to try and get some pressure out, but he's polymorphed, not able to connect. Use his spell re reflect aggressively to stay on target with his cooldowns. Now won't have that defensively. It's not typical. We see Bluzo playing aggressive like that. Perhaps he gets punished. Morrow still under fire, interrupted on Frost for a couple of seconds, relying on the Tempor shield to absorb the damage during that critical moment. Minpoike in an intimidating shot. Bluzo's using most of his utility aggressively. Seems like he's had enough of this now that Dampening's in the game. Wildcard Gaming have switched their strategy. Their allocation of crowd control is much more aggressive. This seems to be the wise move before Dampening. Fried Kitty currently taking control of Blizzo, and now tag teamed with Minpoike. You're a warrior against a Frost Mage Druid. Not going to be the greatest time. It's just a plethora of crowd control between those two classes. Maro stunned up. Acro sets up for a polymorph. Fried Kitty looks to get follow up, but Blizzo shuts them down. Beautiful shutdown by Blizzo. Still, even with breaking out the crowd control, Maro is low on health. Yeah, Maro taking a lot of damage. Acro looking to take him down. He does connect. That was a really nice cyclone on the Gladiator Safeguard. Nicely done there by Minpoike. Can he follow it up? Temporal Shield trades out with the Ice Barrier, but they're just killing him through it. Morrow, he has to hold on. Temporal Shield bounces him up just a little bit. Fried Kitty spamming out the damage. Kitty shot. Morrow trinkets out. Looney's in a bash. This could be the second Ice Block. Can they get it? Acro's in a Polymorph. Finally reconnects with Shadow Step. Morrow's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Frozen Orb drops out for Fried Kitty. Morrow just on the back foot, the consistent damage and control Ooh. of the Assassination Rogue, just so beautiful in this matchup. Acro showcasing it quite nicely. Yep, definitely. Beautiful crowd control from Change My Mind. Oh, that's Solid it. late game strategy implemented. They've got the early game, they've got the oh, late game, they've got the crowd control, done, they've got Minpoike. the denial. Change My Mind's Rogue Mage is looking solid here in the tournament. I'd love to see them go up against Diabolus's Rogue Mage as well as Method Blacks later on in the tournament. Certainly going to be the best restoration Druid comp after the recent reductions. Still prevalent. Cyclone on the Temporal Shield, rotated back over. Full kidney shot afterwards. Another one, Minpoike moves in, secures the bash. Minpoike Okay, crowd controlling the whole team right now, single-handedly carrying the team, setting them up for victory towards the final seconds of this match. There's nothing left to recover. Morrow will get taken out, and I don't think the Warrior Mage Druid is going to work. I, I mean, Linear Trinket then obviously doesn't want to trade out before the blind, but I just it seems kind of hopeless, right? Like, uh, Change My Mind are just so good on this Rogue Mage Druid. We were saying that they struggle in the mirror, but that's been the only matchup we've really seen them faltering in. Outside of that, even against the might of Mara and Looney that you'd think would be also a very formidable Mage Druid, they're just out controlling them, out damaging them, and winning the games quite simply 2 0 already. Yeah, and I mean, it's just. There's so few mistakes here on Change My Mind's uh, side, uh, especially towards the end there. Uh, Poike came in with the MVP place. Uh, so many Cyclones. Uh, man, this was rough. So, uh, <laughs> Acro, he gets cloned up here, gets kidnapped. But then uh, Morrow Trinkets blinks away, and then Fried Kitty, of course, gets the Frozen Orb out, which will force out the Ice Block as soon as he comes out of here. And Poike already cloned up Looney, gets the reclone. 
gets the triple DR clone, I believe here. No, they swap it. Okay, so <laughs> Acro Sheep shots Blizzo uh, into a Cyclone, and Looney gets polymorphed out of the Cyclone, and you can't actually avoid that polymorph. Oh, and of course, because Morrow doesn't have Trinket, because he trinketed before he ice blocked, he gets Kidney Shot Smoke Bomb. Looney goes in there. Morrow gets Cycloned low. I mean, Poike trinkets out of a stun, Fake casts the counter spell, clones Morrow, clones Looney. Morrow has Temporal Shield. He waits for it. He waits for it. Clones the Temporal Shield, swaps it back over onto <laughs> Looney, and then bashes Looney out of the Cyclone. And then Fried Kitty blinks in, double schools Looney with the Ring of Frost into the full sheep because I mean, Poike already faked the CS for him. And then it's just an easy Ray of Frost, and that's it. That was. Uh, it was so good. That was, that's uh, as good as it gets, that's, really. That's about as clean as you can do it. Yeah, I think as any Resto Druid in the world, you're really happy when you see something like that. It's like the perfect situation. Mimpoike completely walking and styling over wild card gaming. He's put his team 2-0 in the lead, and they're looking like they're going through the championship Sunday. Enlight defeat Zyzon 3-0. Now the team that defeated Enlight are winning 2-0 against Wildcard Gaming. Change my mind on point here. Mimpoike, you know, I think it's fair that we cut him some slack given in this, the spring season, you know, we really were hard on him. We didn't think that he was playing at his very best. We expect big things of this guy. Him and Zunyaki, we were saying it last week, that is kind of the clash of the titans from healers that you would have seen maybe four or five years ago in the European scene. Mimpoike wasn't holding to that, but now he really is. And he's really looking like he can contest Chaz, he can contest Looney. And I mean, I want to get your take a little bit on this one, Zico, because that game, like, let's base it on this game alone. I feel like he completely outdid the entirety of wildcard gaming. If he keeps playing like this, then these guys are real contenders, not only in these cups, but also for potentially the summer finals. Well, yeah, I mean, if you only look at that game, he was, you know, 1v5 basically and won. So that game was about as good as they get, but there's always been a glaring weakness. He's always been able to do things like that, where he can just take control, go very offensive, CC the entire team, basically win you the game. But there's always been the drawback as well, uh, which is that he just gets deleted sometimes. And uh, I feel like when it comes to offensive cap capabilities, well, it's true. You've all seen him get deleted. Like, I'm deleted. not making this stuff up. <laughs> Such a Zico way Zico. to put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he just gets deleted, you know. But uh, that is, you know, the risk that you run by having a healer who plays that offensive. If he picks a bad moment to go offensive, then, you know, his character just gets completely erased from his account. Whereas, you know, someone like Chess, someone like Looney, they they will do, uh, you know, those big flashy plays like that that will win you the game a lot less. But they will just be more consistent. They won't get deleted as much. So it depends on, you know, what's your cup of tea there. Yeah, well, I'm certainly a big fan of Mimpoike's play style. And when we guys play on the desk, it's normally a case of like, wow, this play Cyclones work amazing healing stat, but also can I grab a heal or two? Because I have it in office right now. So we'll have to see how this does play out. Wildcard Gaming locking in the TSG, the one of their main compositions. You'd love to see it. They're facing going down to the lower bracket if they lose this game. I think it's enough about Mimpoike here. Wildcard Gaming are fishing for comps and strats to take out Rogue Mage Druid. If they can figure out just one that works, they could have a good run through the tournament, but if they can't figure out one in time, they're going to be knocked out. That's going to be terrible. So many teams tied with them. So many teams on their heels looking to pass them. The competition in the summer season is much higher. Here on Hook Point, Wildcard Gaming select an aggressive map and change my mind, look to try and take that advantage in their own favor by attacking Looney, the healer for Wildcard Gaming. It's going to be quite a fast-paced game. I anticipate if change my mind, keep this strategy going much longer. Yeah, Fry Kitty taking quite a bit of damage. I think on the smaller map on Hook Point, this could be a good situation for Wildcard Gaming. They have a lot of pressure. Fried Kitty gets interrupted. There's going to be no Temporal Shield. Then Poike lands a huge heal, keeping Fried Kitty alive. Acro has to come back. He's trying to make... This is something we see from Rogue Mage Druid so often. The Assassination Rogue, he sits on the healer. The Frost Mage and the Wrestler Druid just try to live as long as possible. But they might have to turn their attention to Blizzo. Fried Kitty, he's just under fire this game. z and Blizzo putting out massive damage. Looney with a preemptive life cocoon keeps him alive in that kidney shot. But he doesn't have that safety net moving forward. Still a really good heads-up play. Big damage here on Looney. Vendetta popped for Acro. He's going to cloak of shadows to stay on target, getting out of the snare, looking to interrupt the heals. Acro has kick available. Looney needs to be careful. Going to be able to freely cast there and avoid that kick. Definitely a good timing on Looney's part. Changed my mind instead, switch strategies. Blinding Looney and going after the warrior. 
they get Looney's Gladiator's Medallion with that blind. Now they set up for switching back to him. Acro wants to, but Chains of Ice is making it a bit predictable as Acro has been waddling back Look and at forth. It becomes very obvious when the rogue is moving to the target as to who he wants to attack and what he has got on his mind. Smoke Bomb gets dropped. Big play on the Blizzo. Where's the Gladiator's Medallion from him? A bit surprising to not see it on the Smoke Bomb. Ring of Peace going to knock him away. The Azerite trait from Blizzo when he activates Avatar also gives him a bit of an absorb. So it was great timing on Blizzo's part there. Able to make himself a bit more defendable for Looney to comfortably sit through that smoke bomb. Now Wildcard Gaming, this is what I wanted to see. What happens when you attack the Druids? Because it seemed like Lone Tar had a really difficult time surviving. And Looney as well when he was the target. I, th I think Wildcard Gaming certainly should be experimenting with switching to Minpoike. Especially with Zico's analysis as well. Ben Poike known for getting deleted. This seems like the obvious choice for them overall. Yeah, Five Kitty trying to get out some consistent damage in the match right now. Have to see if, what he can really get done as Water Elemental gets killed off once again as he blinks on top of Looney, gets Death Gripped away. And that's one of the real problems for the Frost Mage or the Mage in general in this matchup is with the Death Knight on you, if you don't save your mobility, you might not be able to get there, but that might not be a problem. Looney safeguard procs. Life Cocoon trades out also. Big damage coming in from Change My Mind. Can they just shred through it? That would be a bit of a miracle. Looney does manage to stay alive, but now no Trinket, no Life Cocoon, and Acro still all over him in this matchup. I just I really want to see them switch targets more frequently, run the Vision of Perfection on the Warrior, get more Blade Storms, more mobility, get out of the crowd control, and just go after the healer. This strategy, it just seems to me that mages are probably one of the most difficult classes into, in the game to take down right now. They're spending so much time. Looney in trouble, portaling on sub 1% health, recovering desperately around the corner. Acro unable to connect. Fried Kitty can't finish him off. That was a miracle for Looney to still be alive in that moment in time. And yet Wildcard Gaming continued the strategy of attacking the mage. It just seems like it's not the winning strategy. I mean, it feels like Fried Kitty is basically taking no damage. Blizzo down at half health now has changed my mind. Switch targets, putting Looney in an awkward position where he needs to heal two members of the team. If he gets caught in the stun, he could be in trouble. Then blind later on if he trinkets. Finally, damage onto Fried Kitty, but that ice barrier absorbing a huge amount while Minpoike looks to pick him up. Running that Nourish build going to be super effective of healing the mage. The Nourish also tells me that they should be attacking Minpoike. I mean, that's a heal that you can't use when you're the target as honor talent effectively becomes pointless in that position. I, I really think Wildcard Gaming need to switch targets more frequently. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Fried Kitty is struggling to get out damage. I've actually watched his Water Elemental, and it hasn't attacked once in two and a half minutes. So definitely not the best utilization of his pet there. It is good, consistent damage in the matchup. Going to have to look for that a little bit closer in the game. Blizzo now, Blade Storming on top of Fried Kitty. Getting a little bit of damage rolling. Acro, what is he going to do? Blizzo is a little bit of a good target right now. Looney, of course, still has his Trinket. I think Blind is available for Acro. There it is. What is Looney going to do? Is he going to trinket out of the blind? Are we going to be able to see that? It looks like he's going to kind of greedily sit the entire thing. There's a polymorph, and now, as a result, Blizzo has to trade out the die by the sword. He's going to be able to survive, but we'll have to see what Looney trades out to keep him alive. That was a big defensive cooldown. They managed to get out from Blizzo, but at the end of the day, Looney holding on to his trinket is really important. The thing is, hook point I think was selected so that Mpoike couldn't drink, but mana is even. So I, I don't think it's really even working out for them too well. Blizzo doesn't have any defensive cooldowns. He's definitely a weak point. They're going after Acro. Finally, some target switching from Wildcard Gaming. I think if they switch between the Rogue and the Druid, that's definitely an effective strategy. I see you guys following Fried Kitty closely as you're both mages on the desks, probably pondering why he's not using the Water Elemental as it would be a significant percentage of his damage. What water Elemental right actually down. going down. Also, holding the Water Elemental next to yourself means it gets Sweeping Strikes, it yeah. gets the off dots from it's, the Death Knight. It's like, really bad pet management if this I'm being This Water critical. Elemental is doing nothing but dying. z the target, though, here. Changed my mind. Mix it up. And deeper and dampening, that's certainly the strategy that could just win them the game. They could just overwhelm the Death Knight with damage. Wildcard Gaming need to end the game. Yeah, and they might be able to. The thing is, Fry Kitty right now, he has both of his ice blocks. Now z taking a little bit of burst damage. Once again, the water element gets killed off from Fried Kitty. z still getting a little bit low. Looney in a prime position to keep him alive. But the thing is, at this point of the game, Looney, he's way behind on mana. Minpoike's been doing a really good job manages, managing his mana so far in the match. Uh, z has to get the life cocoon as well. So big cooldowns being traded out by Wildcard Gaming in order to survive. 
Acro. Has it attacked Acro. once? Do no, we have details? The, the water elemental has not attacked once the entire game. Literally. So that that's a big like healing set ask, what percentage of your damage is that? It's like third. That's literally it's like ten to twenty percent of your damage in some games. Twenty percent is very generous, but ten to fifteen percent of your damage. Finally, the first water bolt gonna be channeled out. Maybe he's listening. Yeah. Maybe Belay is watching in the yeah, call, like, hey, what are you yeah. doing? <laughs> Well, we'll have to see. Zipai and Blizzo once again on target. This is when they can start really developing some pressure. Unfortunately for them, this is also when Zipai starts becoming a great target. Yeah, this is unfortunate. They're behind on mana. Dampening is very high. I feel like Looney at any point could be swapped too. All three members of the team are going to be susceptible to rogue mage pressure deeper into dampening, which are already kind of pretty deep. Zipai's got Lichborn, so he can rotate some defensive cooldowns more readily, at least, I suppose. Acro finally the target. I think Wildcard Gaming are realizing that Fried Kitty on that mage is just not taking any damage. I think the Rogue and the Druid are much prime, much more prime targets for the TSG. Acro hovering at sub 50% with Faint rolling to reduce the damage and hopefully allow him in time to recover. But with that Nourish build, he is easily healing. Perhaps a split strategy, even. Having either the Warrior or the Death Knight going after him in Poike, and then the other, whether it's Zipai or Blizzard, going after the Rogue or the Mage. A split strategy could definitely shut down the Nourish build that Min Poike is running. It's something we haven't seen them try just yet. Big push on Blizzo. They cut right through that life cocoon. Fried Kitty looking to reset that frozen orb as soon as possible with the Blizzard. Certainly effective against the Holy Death Knight and a melee cleave in general. It's going to be resetting quite rapidly. Acro looks like he wants to set up on Looney. Looney with no Gladiator's Medallion and no life cocoon. So Looney needs to be ready for it. Vendetta's available. Frozen orb is up. Change my mind at any moment. Can look to switch. They're going after Blizzo instead. Maybe a bit more of a safe strategy. When Stampening gets to the 30% mark, though, I do anticipate z is going to be their main focus. Decent damage on Fried Kitty. Can they finally get an Ice Block? They've been working all game to get it. They need it. They're so close, but they get denied. Now Blizzo's behind. Yeah, Blizzo could easily just fall. Maledic lands, Smoke Bomb as well. Anti-Magic Zone looking to deny, but a nice counter spell snuck in by Malik. Fried Kitty. Nicely done. Blizzo barely holding on. Full Bash on Looney, full Polymorph. Now what is Blizzo gonna do? He's trying to kite away, but the Ray of Frost channeled in from Fried Kitty could easily take Blizzo down. And still the crowd control is rolling in. Life Cocoon finally comes in in the nick of time. Looney has to play catch up oh. on the Cyclone. Minpoike completely on fire in this series. Minpoike has returned, but now stunned up. Good denial by Z5, but he's still so low on health. I mean, Dampening is at almost 30%. Looney has no mana. I think it's just unhealable damage at this point. Somehow, Blizzo stays in it. The essence of <laughs> Vision of no Perfection way. procced on the kidney shot. Oh. Blizzo broke out of a kidney shot from his essence procking Bladestorm right at a very important time to maybe get some counter pressure he's gonna try and go for the kill still targeting down fried kitty i mean i don't it's gonna be just so sad if they don't even get an ice block from fried kitty in this game i feel like they have not been punishing him in poike at all for the nourish build that he's running they've just been running their heads into a wall on this frost mage and getting nowhere looney's in crowd control blizzo has nothing dampening is very high they pop avatar to try and get a bit of an absorb it buys them time for life cocoon but at this far in a dampening it's not that much of a big absorb and minpoike gets the game winning cyclone into another no gets denied on the follow-up maybe blizzo holds on there's no mana how are you even still alive at this point Change my mind, they're going to clean this up. 3-0. Wildcard Gaming need to find an answer for Rogue Mage Druid, or I don't know how they're going to do in this tournament. Yep, there's a lot of Rogue Mage Druids at the very top of the European scene, and a very convincing victory here for Change My Mind once again. Sure, Fire Kitty's pet was experiencing a little bit of a drought in this game, but they were able to find victory nonetheless. It's really interesting to see Blizzard at the end. He, like, he was basically a, a Beyblade throughout the game. He spanned across the entire map, proc after proc, on the Vision of Perfection. Vision of Perfection is pretty interesting for the Arms Warrior, given that you can basically be in a crowd control and break out of it with the Blade Storm. I saw, saw some X running it a bit, but all of these things taken into account, it still feels like the Rogue Mage Druid has the edge and changed my mind overall. Very good gameplay. Minpoike once again is insane on that Druid. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Wildcard should have tried to explore uh, maybe going after Minpoike a little bit more in that map. Had, uh, in that match, they had the map for it. Uh, they had a decent comp for it as well. Uh, and, you know, changed my mind on this Rogue Mage Druid. They might not be the best team in Mirrors, but they are certainly very good, at, you know, as a team against pretty much every other comp uh, here. They had such a great execution as well. They went after Looney a lot early on in the match. They went after Blizzo. They kept uh, Wildcard Gaming kind of guessing who is going to be the target. 
and at this point in the game, Mipoik has done such a phenomenal job managing his mana and, you know, staying ahead, getting Cyclones, pushing in like he's doing right here uh, when his team is ahead. And, uh, you know, they get the game-winning CCs. Uh, clone on this, uh, I think this was when the, uh, was this the clone on Blizzo? That was super low. No, uh, that was uh, prior. This was during the kill. So Blizzo uh, just going to go down here. You know, Looney can't really do too much about it. But even before this, I really thought that when Blizzo got cloned on like 1% with a with a life cocoon on him, I thought he was going to go down immediately when that clone ended. Uh, you know, wild card kept, kept him going, but just wasn't enough. Yeah, it just wasn't enough. Exactly what you say. Like, you know, the Mistweaver, he, he has great throughput for a very long time, but it doesn't seem like he can contend uh, with the rest of the Druid, especially the Rogue Mage Druid in deep dampening. And we are going to confirm, therefore, that Change My Mind have won this series 3-0. They are through to Championship Sunday, our first team of four that will qualify through to Sunday's bracket.